I'm Kevin Davis. Thanks so much for joining the Catholic Family Podcast. And I know the, the, the reports of my de demise have been greatly exaggerated, <laughs> as they would say. So it's great to be back on. I've had a few health issues lately, and I'm, I'm really happy to be back. And I appreciate all the prayers or any of the prayers that I've gotten in the last few weeks um, dealing with some neck and head issues, which are they're still there. But uh, hopefully they're they're slowly, slowly getting better. And, and I, I failed to ask the most important question. I, I failed to ask, how, how do I say your name? Hoynowski, Peter Hoynowski, Hoynowski. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad I asked. I would <laughs> never have said that right. <laughs> so, okay. So, so, yeah, so, so totally thanks so much for coming on. Um, and, and it's okay, a really, great. really you. great topic. We're talking about Sister Lucy and the Sister Lucy of Fatima, one of the three seers of Fatima, and the story of what happened to her in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and onward. And it's really fascinating. And there's what we've been told should be questioned. Let's just say that. And I think that that's something that you have spent a lot of time in trying to yeah. question the, the entire agenda or the story that's being promoted by the Nova Soto Church and by Rome, et cetera. And so before we get into the story, I'd ask you if you could please yes. give us a brief description of, of who are you? Okay. Okay. I'm uh, Peter Hoynowski. I, um, I was born in uh, New Britain, Connecticut in 1965. And um, I studied um, to uh, teach philosophy and I went to St. Louis University, Fordham University, and uh, got my PhD in philosophy. I went on to teach in s about seven uh, institutions of higher education and some high schools. And currently I teach at a high school out here in Idaho. And um, basically I've been spending my life and career writing articles and teaching a lot. And um, and speaking about Fatima, Catholic social principles, the philosophy of St. Thomas Aquinas, all those things. And um, basically, you know, I want to express what the church has taught throughout its history and uh, its great philosophical and theological truths. And it's only by chance that I, you know, ran into Father Gruner and became uh, associated with the uh, Fatima Center and began to speak throughout the world about Fatima, the miracle of the sun, the third secret. And then as time went on, uh, especially in 19, uh, 2017, um, basically I ran into this whole Sister Lucy issue clearly there's some there was some problem with the the pictures uh as presented by say tradition and action of uh sister lucy prior to 1960 and sister lucy post 1960 and i wanted i spoke with some of my friends at um, the fatima center and they said well Okay, there looks like there's some problem. There could be a problem, but you know, demonstrate it or or show what the truth is. Have some kind of investigation. So I took up that task. I thought, yes, this is what we should do, and uh, so we launched an investigation myself and and uh, some a few associates, and uh, we entitled it Six Sister Lucy Truth. And we uh, filed with the IRS so that we're a tax deductible uh, corporation and um, tax free um, corporation. And we launched some various uh, inquiries looking at um, basically look, trying to find experts in the various fields that could judge the pictures and the handwriting the videos of Sister Lucy Truth, Sister Lucy of Fatima prior to 1960, and then Sister Lucy of Fatima after 1960, were they the same person? Uh, are we dealing with the same individual, say, in 1967, and then 
um, when she reappeared again in 1982 after the assassination of uh, John Paul II, are we dealing with the same person? And because it's a fundamental issue, because if you're not dealing with the same person, then you have a problem. <laughs> then what happened to the original person? So um, this challenge of trying to determine in a scientific way whether Sister Lucy was the same person throughout her history, purported history, from 1907 to... Um, 2005 has been our task and report after report after report um, has indicated to us that it's a different person. A different person emerged clearly um, after 1960, clearly in 1967 there was a different person and that different person main, took on the persona and the identity of Sister Lucy of Fatima until 2005 when she purportedly died so um or actually died so um this is what we we found and it it shocked us um that there was such almost there was such certainty on the part of so many of these experts and uh you know they even indicated well why hasn't this been looked into before because from our perspective, from the perspective of surgeons and dentists and maxillofacial specialists um, and uh, the latest in technology from, you know, the uh, facial analysis technology, handwriting analysis, the various letters that um, she had in her early life and then later on in the 60s and 80s. Um, we we find over and over again that there's been a fraud committed uh, with regard to the identity of Sister Lucy of Fatima, and we're continuing our investigation. We want to ultimately get DNA evidence, and then, if we can, answer the question who the imposter was, and also uh, what happened to the real Sister Lucy. Yeah, and it's great. I think it's a it's a fascinating mission, and a, and it it's a tragic tale. I think and it, it leaves with a, us with a lot of questions. And I, I'd ask you first. I, I think most people watching this probably already know or have a good idea, but maybe you could give us a brief explanation of who was Lucy of Fatima, and, and maybe a really brief explanation of what happened at Fatima. Maybe just a couple minutes, just to say, okay, why is this important? Who who was she? What happened in, in sure. 1917? Um, in 1917, uh, three uh, Portuguese peasant children, uh, Lucia dos Santos and Jacinta and Francisco Marto, were um, you know in shepherding their sheep, and um, after after a, a year before, when an angel appeared to them and sort of prepared them for this revelation that would come in 1917 um, on very on May 13th and then June 13th and then July 13th um, then there was a hiatus where the apparition didn't take place until August uh, 19th and then February 13th and then October 13th there were apparitions of a lady the lady to these three children and she would always at, indicate to them various, she'd give them various messages. And for example, do penance, uh, pray the rosary, you know, various uh, statements about their friends and family and promising them heaven and urging penance, penance, that they were to do penance and they were to pray uh, for sinners. And then in July of, of 1917, um, they were given three secrets. The first was that the, a vision of hell, a vision of the damned. And also it was indicated to them how they were to pray for sinners so they didn't, uh, you know, fall into hell. Then there was the second uh, apparition, the second secret, which focused on 
the beginning of a new war, the outbreak of a new war, which would be World War II, which would be for the punishment of mankind. Uh, God would punish mankind by unleashing a war that would even be greater than the war that they were living through, which was World War I. Uh, the third secret that was given is a secret that was purportedly revealed in 2000 by the Vatican, uh, having to do with uh, basically an ecclesiastical procession, uh, moving through a de uh, decimated city, half destroyed, to a cross, uh, indicating that a man, the a bishop in white, um, was shot and killed by uh, soldiers with arrows and, and guns, and uh, basically indicating that there would be a great martyrdom that would happen to the, the Pope and um, to the uh, clergy and the church. But um, this was what the Vatican put out, but it this third secret, which was kept secret uh, for so long, it was supposed to be revealed in 1960, but it wasn't revealed in 1960. Um, it was it was supposed to be revealed, and then uh, John the 23rd said that no, um, this would not be revealed, or a press release was put out, no, this would not be revealed, and instead. Um, we would not, we would not speak of this. Uh, he said it didn't have to do with my pontificate. So everything, so the whole third secret, which everyone in the Catholic world was waiting for in 1960 was not revealed. And this is what, uh, sort of dampened the fervor of the Catholic people and confused them. Clearly, Our Lady said that it was to be revealed by 1960. Uh, Sister Lucy of Fatima indicated that it was to be re revealed by 1960. And then all of a sudden, the Vatican says, no, 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 it's not to be revealed and it won't be revealed. And uh, that's how things were left until the year 2000. And in 2000, they came out with this secret which didn't was not at all what was expected. Um, it was a lengthy uh, document rather than the 21 line uh, paper that was you know seen by someone who looked at into the envelope into which it was put. Uh, it did not follow the um, the text of the second secret which said that um, in Portugal, the doctrine of the faith would be maintained. This secret did not follow, and then it said, etc., meaning it was leading into the third secret. This stated, uh, this released document did not follow from that etc., that idea that Portugal, you know, would be one place where the faith would be maintained, as if, there would be a great apostasy in other places. So the Vatican, uh, not only with the third secret, but with the whole identity of Sister Lucy, has manipulated the Fatima message, the Fatima history, uh, even the Fatima devotion for what I believe are its own purposes. They're not Catholic purposes. And uh, we're faced with this fact that uh, basically, you have uh, an, I, a woman who has been eliminated from the scene, I would say at least by 1960, and someone else put in her place. And, and Kevin, this is sort of, I mean, when has this happened before in the history of the church? It's so bizarre. It's so unheard of. And yet, this woman was supposed to be, was the messenger of Our Lady. She was the one who carried forth the secret of Fatima and um, the message of Fatima. That was her purpose. So, I mean, what, what, what kind of diabolical situation are we in that people 
would feel like they had to eliminate her and they would have the power to eliminate her. That's something else. This is this to eliminate such a woman to make the, her disappear from the scene uh, to replace her is truly dark and it's oh, it, shocking. It's definitely and true. I don't right. think we, yeah. we, I mean, have we even fathomed the idea of what happened and that this happened and that this was allowed to happen even by God and Our Lady? That's probably the most shocking thing, which shows you that, well, of course, some they don't protect us from all evil, uh, you know, every immediate evil, ultimately, yes. But um, Our Lady and Our Lord allowed this to happen for a great reason, but they allowed it to happen, and it is a great evil. It's an unthinkable evil that has been perpetrated by those in higher places in the church. I can't, you know, I'll ask you, but who else could authorize such a, a switch? Uh, the disappearance of, a, of the real seer of Fatima, this Carmelite nun, who could, and the substitution in her place of someone else who, when you look at her, when you look at the pictures, I mean, scientific analysis is fantastic, but in a common sense approach, when you look at the two women, the women, these are two totally different women expressing a different atmosphere, spiritual atmosphere, a whole moral tone is different, and the whole attitude of the individuals are different. So sort of shocking. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And, and as you as you say, you know, if you're asking the question, who could have done it? I think if you're asking, yeah. if she had just if she had just disappeared, then I think you could you could have a lot more of a who knows, you know, maybe maybe one bishop, sure. maybe you know, da 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 da. When you look into someone that they replaced her, and, and as you say, you know, sister truth, sister Lucy Truth dot com, and, and you look at all the evidence, as you say, scientific evidence, and it's really clear yeah. that they replaced her with somebody. And then the question has to become, okay, yeah, who did it, and, and why did they do it? And as you say. Sure. It has to be from the top. It has to be. There, there, there's no other. Well, do you agree with me? I mean, I, I've thought about this for so long now, and it had to be. No one else could sign off on it. It was such a shocking thing. No one else could shock, sign off on it. And those at the top used the new person to advance their own agenda. That's clear. Whether it's, you know, even Paul the Sixth in 1967 or John Paul II uh, from 1982 on, they used this individual to back up what they were doing in the church. And everyone, no matter what side you fall on, whether you agree with the new order in the church or violently reject it, there's something different going on. And um, she... This new person clearly backed up the, what was what was going on, and they used her to back it up. I mean, the new uh, Sister Lucy is fawning over John Paul II, don't you think? And fawning, and, and fawning, and you're really right. There, there's videos <laughs> of her that are really bizarre, like, like really strange of how she acts. It, it is not. I, I think she seems almost insane that the new sister Lucy in some of really, the, yeah, the ways yeah. you see her in videos, it, it is not natural. It's very odd. And, and I just, you yes. can't, you can't imagine this is the, it's as you say, even if the physical appearance matched perfectly, the, the actions yes. are, are, they don't fit. They, they, they're not, well, they don't feel like the same person. Think about the year 2000 when John Paul II was at Fatima and sister Lucy is pictured and you can see the video we have it all over of receiving communion from John Paul II she who received a communion from an angel in 1916 which the, the angel said prostrate yourself before receiving communion because you're in front of almighty God and this woman uh, approached, claiming to be Sister Lucy, approached John Paul II. He wanted to give her clearly 
communion on the tongue, but she went up to grab his hand as if she was used to receiving communion in the hand. And then after she received uh, communion, she, um, she grabbed his hand and kissed it. How is this the proper approach and of, of a Catholic who is going to receive communion? And then she asked her, you know, bodyguard, uh, her helper, if she could stay right next to John Paul II at that event and, um, and stay with him when he was giving out communion. I mean, that's Strange. how you behave when you're receiving communion. Nothing matches, nothing matches. Even the behavior, I don't know if you've seen our pictures from 1967, that event at Fatima, May 13th. The only time this Sister Lucy appeared in public prior to uh, being brought out again by John Paul II after the assassination attempt against him, um, she's very open, she's very... Uh, she loves, seems to love the press. She's smiling. She's, you know, very social and over, even overly social and um, not afraid of crowds in any way. This is not the Sister Lucy we see in every other picture prior to that point. Not in any way. She's very well, demure, absolutely. very, right. very quiet. I mean, you have a bishop standing next to her. She's just hands by her side. The bishop is two feet away. And I mean, just very reserved, very pious, very humble. Nothing like this woman. I mean, they, they picked a terrible actress. When you look at it, when you actually know what you're looking at, they picked really a terrible actress to do this. Uh, whoever this woman is, whether she was a Carmelite nun, a nun of some kind, or just a woman from outside who took on the role of Sister Lucy, um, whoever it was, it, she didn't portray Sister Lucy very well, certainly. Uh, unless, unless you believe that Sister Lucy changed as the church changed, right? I mean, I mean, what, what's actually <laughs> honestly, what's 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 more crazy? What's more crazy that Sister Lucy turned into a totally different person over sixty years, or right, that the Catholic right, Church sure. turned into a totally different church over sixty years? And and, and so they go well, both as we see, the they case. go hand yeah, in yeah, hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, right, right. Totally. They both go hand in hand. Both go hand in hand. The church changed, and that was the idea, I think. A new Sister Lucy for a new church. But how? But they're, they're acting like it's the same one. The Carmelite convent in Coimbra acts like it's the same person. The Fatima shrine acts like it's the same person. They have never, ever, ever said anything else. We are pushing it, and they have never responded to us. They have never responded to our charges except to ignore everything that we come out with. So uh, others are not ignoring it, but they're simply dismissing it as conspiracy theories. This is fact. This is fact. The conspiracy behind this, we don't fully understand in any way yet. However, that there was something that happened that brought about the replacement of Sister Lucia Fatima with someone else, that's a given. That is a given. We have the testimony of, for example, I'll just give you one name, Lois Gibson, who is, um, she holds the world's record for the Guinness Book of World Records for uh, her forensic drawings identified the most criminals, like thousands of criminals with her forensic drawing. Uh, she worked for the Houston uh, Police Department, and she was known throughout the world. And um, she, after analyzing the whole panoply of pictures that are available of the Sister Lucy throughout from, you know, n uh, 1917 or 1910 to 2005, she said, it's impossible that these two women be the same person. 
impossible. Looking at everything that, every aspect that she's used to looking at. And she says she's reconstructed faces from skulls. She's trained as a dentist. She knows all these things. She says it's impossible that they be the same person. She said, I could write eight reports for you, but these are enough. Because once it's shown, once it's demonstrated, you don't need to go on. It's so. And as you say, I mean, that, that's one example. I mean, I, if you go to your website, you have lists of, of scientists and different people, you know, people top, top of their field that, that are clearly yes. saying, hey, look, you know, this. And it, as far as I as far as I understand, these aren't people who are who are biased. They're not looking. They don't have a dog in the fight. No, They're not like, no. hey, you know. No, they're I don't. I don't like this. New Sister Lucy. Exactly. They're they're scientists. No, they're exactly. not cath. They're not Catholic. They're they're they they're sort of they're presented with the pictures and they don't even know the issue. Many don't even know about Fatima at all, at all. Most don't know about Fatima really at all, and no details. They've heard of some nun, and you know, but they don't know. We 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 went to them because of their. Um, you know, professionalism because they didn't have any position and um, this is what they came out with. This, this clear statement that looking at the evidence, it could not be the same person. And we have, you know, pictures from the forties and earlier from the fifties and then 67 and then in the eighties. And they say clearly from 19, say, 57 to 67, a different person emerged as Sister Lucy of Fatima. That's incredible. And, and, and I've looked through, obviously, the website, too. And, and just one of the things that really struck me was the photoshopped pictures. Uh, and it, just a couple of that I saw photoshopped, and not even photoshopped, copy-pasted. Like her, just, you know, take or maybe it was one of your videos. You just take her. And you just plug it into a a, a, a picture that already yeah, yeah. existed of all the sex, and it's so cheap. It's like it's like I, I think a fifteen year old <laughs> could do it right now. Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. I know. And so it's like yeah. these people. These people, this is another scary point of this entire topic that these people. Yeah, but Kevin, this that, that happened one month after. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They they one month after it was intentional. This is what they were doing. They portrayed her everywhere, and it's really almost the same picture. Did you see that? It's yeah. almost this. It's it's the same source picture that they just moved around, flipped around, and uh, put in all these different situations um, where she wasn't actually. She was there. This new woman was with Paul the Sixth for a few minutes. And she spoke with him apparently for three minutes. That's it. That's all he wanted to speak to her for three minutes. And apparently from the newspaper inter, uh, accounts, uh, she wanted to speak to him in private, but he said, no, uh, go speak with your bishop. He'll, he'll help you. <laughs> I mean, you, you went to Fatima? This is the 50th anniversary and you don't want to speak to the seer. Maybe she has another message. Or unless you know that this is not the real seer of Fatima, then, you know. It's incredible. <laughs> then you, no, who, who this, wants no. to talk to her? Yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. And especially with, with really such a, who wants a clown of a person. I mean, it's a, it's whoever right. this, this oh, woman is, that, um, who knows, but it's, it's unfortunate to see it. As we've said, she, she does not act like a, I don't think she acts like a total, totally sane person. Now, maybe that's because she's an actress who's had to act, you know, half of her life sure. or most of her life, which is sure. that's pretty traumatic. Sure. So I can understand sure. how that could affect you mentally, but it's right. Yeah. It, it's, it's a, it's a strange, it's a strange deal. And there's so much evidence. I mean, I, I saw again, some of the evidence on, on your website of, of, people sculpting sure. their faces like professional sculptors. I thought that was really interesting that you can just see. Yes. It can't be the same person. It can't be the same person. And from the artistic perspective and the three dimensional perspective, you see that there's so many differences that it cannot be the same person. I mean, shocking differences. The real sister Lucy looks like a Portuguese peasant, but a saint too. 
a saint, someone with character, this new woman, you know why she was chosen. You know, in some of the uh, facial recognition technology that uh, tests that were done uh, with regard to some picture comparisons, uh, some identified the Sister Lucy of 1967, uh, who was supposed to be 60 years old at the time. Uh, they identified her as anywhere from late 30s to uh, maybe 50. Well, even the latest one, that's what they came out with. They're 30, like 39 to 50. Well, she was supposed to be 60. She can pass off as 40, 20 years younger, probably because the re the fake Sister Lucy was 20 years younger than the uh, real Sister Lucy. Something around there, 20 years, 17 years, something like that. We don't know because we don't know who the imposter was yet. And, and I guess knowing all of this, which again, I, I highly recommend anyone to go to the website, which I'll of course link um, sure. to this, to this sure. channel. And it, sure. anyone who goes, I mean, please go check out all the evidence, see for yourself. I, it's, it's easier if you go see on the website than if we even, if we talk about it, it's, it's just, it's evidence after evidence after evidence. And I think that if you go, you'll be fairly convinced that, that these are two different people. So I, I would ask you then, you know, why? What, what, and this is hypothetical. I understand that, that we sure, can't know. Sure, we don't know. Sure. But why? What's your opinion? We don't know. Why Why could they have done this? What, what, what's the purpose? The, the purpose is to make sure that Sister Lucy, the real one, didn't stand up against the modernist revolution. She wasn't the focal point of opposition to the modernist revolution, which was being pulled off in the 60s and the 70s and 80s. She would not stand in opposition. She would not go against the new vision of the Catholic religion that they were presenting. For example, even in 1962, when I believe she was already gone, when John the 23rd on October 11th, 1962, he opened the Vatican II Council and he said, he, 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 he said, we will not follow the prophets of doom. We will not heed or follow the prophets of doom. We look forward to this new world where mankind is, you know, gaining a new understanding of itself. And who were the prophets of doom, Kevin? Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Mary at Fatima, right? Or, and the only remaining seer of Fatima, the children of Fatima and the only remaining seer, Lucy. We will not heed. So suddenly... A, the prophet of doom who's saying man must repent or grave things are going to happen and probably apostasy will come from the church to the church from the very top. Suddenly you go from that kind of person to someone who goes along with every single innovation, every single change, every single change of doctrine Every single one. Well, what what could they ask for that's better than that? Now, she's not the main opponent. Now, she's the main advocate of the modernist revolution. The complete changing, except for some externals, of the Catholic Church. To make it something no Catholic from the 50s or 40s or 30s would, or, would recognize. Except in some, you know, externals, they wear the same clothes, some of them, sometimes. Right, right. So, that, that's, that's, a, I mean, that's a good point. They hijack yeah. a person. They hijack someone's identity. So if there's, a, if there's a crime, if there's a crime, maybe it's murder, may, maybe it's kidnapping, right? But there's certainly the crime of identity theft, the crime of identity theft at this high a level is a crime nonetheless. So this is really a criminal investigation. 
It is a criminal investigation. And that's that's how we treat it. And that's how our investigators treat it. And that's I think that's that's really interesting. I, I've got a question for you here on I think on YouTube. Someone asking if you sure. guys are working on DNA evidence. I think you mentioned that already. We are. We are. Uh, we've put out a thousand dollar reward or, a, you know, a reward for anyone, a, a relative of um, Sister Lucy or uh, a, dis, um, a relative of Jacinta and Francisco, because they were first cousins with Sister Lucy, to come forward allow us to take, you know, DNA samples. So we'll have that uh, of the real uh, Sister Lucy, the family of the real Sister Lucy. And um, then we have to get DNA evidence from the imposter Sister Lucy. And um, that's difficult. <laughs> we have, right. we're, we're actually, we're actually looking into some things that you know we we hoped at one point perhaps may still uh give us some dna evidence but uh it's a difficult task but we want it to be done let us let us uh to to disprove what we're saying let us have uh dna evidence from the the woman in the tomb at fatima the central tomb there between francisco and jacinta let us have DNA evidence because there's going to be an attempt at beatification. There's going to be an attempt at canonization. So let us have DNA evidence to compare. They won't. I hope they do. I hope we, you know, otherwise we'll have to try to get in some other way. So it's, it's but, possible that the that the tomb is now again filled by the original St. Lucy or Sister Lucy. Perhaps. Lucy. Perhaps Who knows? <laughs> right. we don't know. We don't know. Um, but this would just be an absolute proof to anyone who wants to even think about the issue that there were two separate people. We recognize this scientifically. This would be an absolute proof. But we're doing everything we can without having that yet. <laughs> We're doing everything we can to identify what happened, ident uh, try to understand, you know, how there could have been two women involved in this whole dr drama. Um, we're doing everything we can to try to present the case with all the evidence in a rational way, in an orderly way, and... I think we people are beginning to think about it and it's sort of beginning to resonate. I, and many people take it for granted. When you look at the various videos of S Sister Lucy and you look at the comments, many, 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 many uh, acknowledge that there was a fake Sister Lucy. Many. And they cite our evidence and refer people to our evidence. So... We're getting somewhere, but our story is much bigger than the publicity that we've gotten so far uh, has you know, shown. Our story is bigger. We're looking for someone to launch a movie effort to portray. What we will say is one of the greatest crimes in the history of the church. And I say that without the slightest hesitation. It's one of the greatest crimes in the history of the church. Would you agree? I uh, I I think I think unquestionably. I, I mean I mean I mean I think you can already say that that hiding the third secret is already one of the greatest crimes that that was supposed sure, to absolutely. Our lady said oh. our lady said, hey, you know, nineteen sixty or by the time Sister um, Lucia sure. died, or maybe Sister Lucia said that. So that's already a great crime promoted right. by by the the last um, you know men who held the 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 seat of Saint Peter in Rome. Sure. But yeah, exactly. And then and then as you say. If you add on to that, the actual idea of a criminal investigation of of of, of stealing sure. someone's identity sure. is stealing someone's identity in order to promote a modernist and in in my opinion clearly heretical 
movement in, in, you know, it's in New clearly Church. heretical it's clearly yeah. heretical I mean even what Francis said the other day uh, basically saying that even the blasphemers the blasphemers the are in God's house <laughs> The blasphemers and apostates are, are in the are in the right in heaven, right? Well, Kevin, members of the saints. That means faith. That means faith has nothing to do with salvation. That's apostasy. That's not just like a little that uh, a heresy. Like, well, there's only one will in Christ, and not two. That's outright apostasy because that's the mission of the church. That's the purpose of Christ and the church is to. Because we're saved by faith, right? Faith and good works based on faith. The true right. faith. And through, and through Christ, through exactly, through Christ alone. I mean, I think those are the words from his sure. own mouth. And and, and you see sure. from, from Vatican II, obviously, they brought in the idea of a false ecumenism, the idea that all religions can lead you to salvation. And, and as you see, this is the mm -hmm. natural outcome. If you believe that, eventually, then you'll say, well, of course, Everyone must be saved because everything is okay. And so that eventually you have no sure. religion. I, I can't. Fran sure. Francis or Bergoglio is clearly a, a puppet of the of the communist state. I think I think that you'd probably agree with that too. I mean, it's it's so ridiculous he, at this point, it, it hardly bears. He's he's his 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 um he's clearly a man who lost his faith a long time ago. Would you say? I mean yeah. he'd have to. And I think they all I think they all lost their faith. Um way back in their early days it just didn't happen but those who lost faith were the ones who chose who advances right in the church at the time so uh when we look at john paul ii who brought uh remember paul the six only brought up you know showed to the world this fake sister lucy once john paul ii was continually bringing her to the public Clearly knowing, and don't tell me he didn't know, that this was an imposter. He was in the church since, an uh, important person in the church way back in the 50s. He knew this was an imposter. He, he knew that this was not the real person. So it was someone play acting her. And yet he used her to advance his own agenda. And guess what happened? The third secret, according to the Vatican, is about him. Right. Yeah. It's not about him apostasy and his or war right. or nuclear destruction. Right. It's about him and his uh, the assassination attempt against him and how he's the Pope of Fatima. It's about him. Whoa! Surprising. And he, he's a great showman. He should be the he, he one. He was a great showman. Yeah. He was a he was an actor. He was a showman and. Um, isn't it funny that he brings in this woman who is acting? I don't know if she's a real nun. Perhaps. Was she a Carmelite nun? Perhaps. Did she have nothing to do with religious life? Perhaps. We don't know. But certainly she was an actor, actress, who stole someone else's identity. And so I, I'd have no sympathy for her. I don't know. I'm. She could have be a, just have been a manipulated woman. Her conscience was manipulated somehow. She was told she was given this role. I don't know. In some ways, you empathize with her, but objectively speaking, it was just wrong. It was uh, gravely course. wrong. It was gravely wrong. And it'd be it's interesting to find out who she was by her accent on the various tapes. We've identified. Uh, the place where she probably was from, which is nowhere near Fatima or uh, even Coimbra. It's north of Coimbra. And um, so that'll help us. The linguistic analysis will help us sort of ultimately find out who she was. But uh, she apparently was a native uh, Portuguese speaker from what we hear on the tapes and uh, the interviews. So, so at least they got something right about her. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, I, I guess they didn't want to go too far afield by bringing someone in from, you know, England or France or wherever. But um, who was this person? How can you 
um, take up an entire new identity, what happened to her old identity, right? How long the, must they have been planning I mean, it? They, they must have planned that for a long time. This this could not have been a day to day switch. No chance. No, no. And many many think many think that she was encouraged to enter the Carmelites in order to pull off the switch. You know, all her teeth were taken out at one point. Um, pro, could possibly to enable the switch to happen. Um, I don't know. I really don't know, but she could have been set up for this purpose for years before, uh, Monsignor Montini was the one who actually facilitated her transition from the Dorothean order to the Carmelites in the 1940s against the wishes of her Dorothean superior, by the way, apparently from what I've heard. Okay. So, um, so, that, so he knew. So, but yeah. it's the same thing. Like that, the entire idea of the modernist church was in effect. It, it was in the works by at, at the time of Pius X, and so it didn't work sure. at his time. And they 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 took it back and like, okay, let's try this again. You know, in in a half a century, and and so the idea sure. that they were planning this and trying to throw under you know throw in the in the closet all of the skeletons that would come back and hurt them. It's not that far fetched to think. No, no. But see, most people find it shocking who just hear about the story because they think of the Catholic, there's like this complete continuity between the Catholic Church in the past and the what goes for the Catholic Church now. They only see, they only think that there's this continuity, you know, but they don't realize the revolution that happened in the 1960s and after and they don't realize that there was a doctrinal basis for that revolution. Doctrine changed and the whole and everything changed because of that change of doctrine. Most people don't realize this. You know, they think it's just the, oh, now it's in English, the mass. And um, it's it's not it's not just that the whole religion was um Bur burrowed out and uh, emptied out and something else put in uh humanitarian uh psychologism based on subjectivism was put in its place and well, um, can, you, can you imagine uh, uh, sister lucy sister lucy who who obviously again was was able to see hell and see the blessed virgin mary and can you imagine her being close friends with the pope who went and worshipped Buddha in the, in the, uh, the you know the, the cathedral in Assisi and, and many other different things? I, I I just I can't bring my mind to believe this. I just no. there's no and, chance and that this and, woman would be do that. No way. No, and that's why I think I I don't I, I think let's go through the scenarios. If she died a natural death before 1960, they would have just announced it, right? announced it she died she won't come out against us you know and she was always obedient nun for the church and she she died then the portuguese government would say okay she died there's a death certificate there's something league there's some legality about the whole thing uh if she was just kidnapped and put away in silence like so many from say the fatima center would would hold well, then there's always the distinct possibility that she, her, um, a message from her would get out, some kind of communication would get out, and it would blow the whole fraud, which I don't think the Vatican would want that kind of exposure uh, of a fraud like that if she was just put away in silence. And what if someone knew about it and, and, and told somebody? that she was being kept away in some little, you know, I don't know, Romanian convent somewhere, <laughs> you know, or a Austrian mountain shack. Um, yeah, it's, ris it's, too, it's risky, yeah. And there's always the chance that she could get out. So I think, personally, I think the likelihood is that she was murdered and simply replaced, which makes and it all I the guess more diabolical. 
It's, it's true. Do you, do, and do you I guess... agree with me? I don't know. Do you agree? I, I'm not, you know, it's, it's yeah, just a conjecture, I... but based on the yeah. evidence. Sure. I mean, if you, if you look at it that way, I mean, it, as if you're looking at a possible crime, it makes the most sense in covering it up. Now, obviously, we don't know if that's what happened, but just take no, yourself out of it and say she was replaced and they didn't want her yes. around. It's it's definitely no. riskier to keep it, as you say, to keep her in a hut in Austria because she could be a big sure. problem because she she knows the third secret and she can reveal the third secret at any time. And especially now, you know, as the media becomes bigger and bigger, if she gets yes. one report somehow to sure. CBS or what, whatever, I mean, then their entire game is over. If, if the third secret, right. like I believe, was the was the great apostasy, the true third secret, sure. I, I think that's right. Probably, I don't know, but I think so. Sure. And that's the case. Of course. They don't want that getting out, and and I think, yeah, no, I, I think it's no. it's it's possible that in some way Sister Lucy was martyred for the truth. I, I think I that's, think she was mar I think she was martyred. She was martyred, and in a way that a mart I mean, even beyond martyrdom, her whole identity was taken and stolen and twisted. That's serious. Yeah. Wake up. Why why right. do these people make a career of talking about Fatima and don't talk about this? Stop your career. End it. It's based on a lie. It's based on a lie that that woman from 1960 on was the real Sister Lucy. That's a lie. We've proven it. Stop saying you represent you speak about Fatima cuz you don't. You lie. And I I'm, I'm getting a little emotional here but I understand. I, I've, I've watched some of these. They're yeah, making I've watched some money. Of these. They're making money on right. this idea that the fake Sister Lucy was real. When we've proven right. it wasn't. She wasn't real. She wasn't the same person. Stop making money. If you're going to say that, because everything that that woman said, listen, it doesn't matter what that woman said after 1960, because that's not her. It's not her. It doesn't matter if she said that the uh, consecration was done or wasn't done. It's not her. So it doesn't matter. Wake up, Chris Ferrara. No, it's, Wake I, I, up, I, I totally Fatima understand. Center. You're lying <laughs> right. to the people. You're right. lying to the people. Don't support them until they come clean on this truth absolutely and i i've seen other podcasts talking i think with chris ferrara and, and others and they they don't even approach it they, they don't even they'll just be like oh there are there are these rumors or they just, they'll literally not even talk about it and i mean really they'll just be like oh no 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 not gonna bring that up because of course they i mean it's a it's a it's a touchy, scary subject for them because it, it, it hurts their paycheck. It would and overturn their the, the apple cart. It would overturn the apple yeah. cart. Well, sure. truth overturns the apple cart, Kevin, <laughs> right? If a truth overturns the apple cart, you got rotten apples. Let, let them overturn. Let them dump out. Fill them up with good apples <laughs> and push that cart. 100%. Because, um, I mean, and and focus on the evil that infested the Vatican and the church during those years that allowed something like that to happen, that required something like that to happen. Focus on exactly. the evil. It's not just a little thing. It's not just some crazy liberalism right. that produced yeah, the Nancy Pelosi. It's not just that. It's much, much graver. I mean, the highest enemies of the church attacked the church and were able to even eliminate the messenger of Our Lady. That's some pretty high evil. Oh, of course. Yeah, I, I, mean, they, 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 I mean, if they, they, of course, they, they set up an ape church and they set up a fake church and they're leading souls away. For goodness sake, the man who calls himself Pope just said that Judas and, and everyone, anyone else you want to think of are, are in the communion of saints. I mean, it's absolutely, it's not even just heretical. It's, it's insane. It doesn't even make sense. It's insane. And, 
it's insane. It's insane. And, yeah. and as you see, it is it's an evil and, and it's it's a it's an ape church that's been set up for the last what 70 60 years now and sure. And, um, sure. And, and it started and this is a big piece of that. And and I mean and, and so I sure. guess that's a question for you. It, obviously a big part of your goal as you said is to scientifically in, in like as a criminal investigation find out the truth yes. of this. And right. so what is that your ultimate goal? What what is your is that and is it also trying to wake people up to the truth of, of what's going on in the church? Well, I think that uh, is a consequence of it. It's not our particular goal. We are trying to, we are tr giving evidence as to what was going on in this whole time. I mean, we didn't plan on finding a fake Sister Lucy. But when one report after another and one investigator after another says, well, look at the evidence. These The computers say it's she's different. Um, then we're presenting this and let people take from it what they want. However, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if people ended up saying, well, there's more fraud going on here than just Sister Lucy. What would provoke this? What would be their motives? And how can you have a good motive when Our Lady herself, listen, who appeared to Kevin, who appeared to Sister Lucy, our Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Our Lady, an angel, the Holy Trinity, they appeared to her, they spoke to her, to touch her is a crime beyond words. Who did it? Who authorized it? How was it done? No, it just shows you that what well, we've been taken as sort of like, oh, I'm a liberal uh, Catholic, I'm a conservative Catholic, or I'm, you know, far right traditionalist, you know, you're not, you're not seeing this. <laughs> you're not seeing what's, you're not seeing the reality of what's been there in front of us for all these years. I mean, I know a nun who uh, said to me, well, I was a young girl in 1967. I read a lot about Fatima. I saw the pictures of Sister Lucy. And then I watched on the screen, our black and white television, uh, the, the event in, in, at Fatima on October on May 13th, 1967, with the anniversary. And I watched it, and I said to my mother, that's not the real Sister Lucy. Look at her chin. <laughs> Look at her chin. And this was a young girl. I think she was like 13. And wow. um, the mother said, oh, no, no, you know, the Pope, the Sister Lucy, the Fatima. No, no, it's it, it's all right. It's... But she recognized it even then. And we, you know, we have to, we, uh, we have to, you know, hire all these professionals to look at the evidence and to try to go through it and analyze it. And then guess what? They say the same thing as that little girl in 1967 saying that that's not Sister Lucy. And I challenge, put a 10 year old in front of a screen with our pictures of the two different Sister Lucys on the screen Ask them, is this the same person? See what they say. And the innocence of you, the, the obviousness of it. You know, I, we want to prove it because yeah. we want to prove it. We we, we want to show, we want to present like scientific evidence, not just. And from day one, from the first test that we proposed, it's come in like that. Our, la our recent report said, oh, it said, um, well, we can't tell. The Sister Lucy of um, of pre, you know, 60 and, and 1967, well, we, uh, we can't really tell if it's the same one. Uh, we have no, you know, it's like zero, it's neutral, our report. But definitely the one from 67 on is the same woman. So if that's definitely the same woman, the other one, well, we don't know, you know. That's further evidence that we're being objective and also that, you know, we're on the, we're on the right, we're on the case and there is a case here to be investigated. So that report will be put up very shortly.
Interesting. And I think that's a good time to ask you, how can people help? What, what, what is it that people can do to forward this? Because as after listening to this, you know, one hour, I hope people see this is a really important issue. And it's something that it truly can shape the way many people understand the last 60 years of the church. And I think that's sure. absolutely true. It's absolutely. really important. So how can we help you? How can we help you get the, the word out? How can we help you okay. financially, whatever it is? Well, how well, we three, th um, go to our website, sisterlucytruth.org. We have a donate button. We really have very few donors and we, we really get very little money and the money we get, we're so thankful for, but we very get, we, really get very little and it is tax deductible and i have you know people that do videos that i need to give some you know i need to compensate for certain things and investigators that i need to compensate for their travel and so on uh just to maintain the bank accounts and uh filings for the irs and all that we need some support but also to say, you know, continue the investigation, to continue the reports, continue uh, analyzing this from various angles. Uh, any donation is, is helpful for us. Also, help us find someone who will make a movie out of, of this case. This is big. We need a, um, we need a, uh, you know, a JFK movie <laughs> about Sister Lucy. This is well, bigger and it's, than and it's, it's, this is yeah, right. supernaturally catastrophic. Yeah, right. That was politically right. uh, catastrophic. This is supernaturally catastrophic. And it's, it's just as intense. It is just as intense. You know, Dan Brown, move over. This is much bigger than what you know or what you said you know. Um, so help us find someone who can develop a movie and produce a movie about this and also um, spread the word. I, you know, we need help on social media. We need help with interviews, uh, you know, putting, we have so many memes and, um, you know, various reports that can be sent around. Um, we need help in doing that because, I mean, we're a handful of people at most. I can think of, you know, five <laughs> so that's it and um so we need whatever help you can give us on the social media in the social media world also perfect no that, that's good and i think that, that i recommend anyone watching this and i know that there are a lot of a lot of causes and, and people's you know pocketbooks are, are are stretched but but i think that i'm sure you would you would agree that it's every every buck counts every dollar counts and Sure. It is as as good of a as good of a thing that you're going to be able to promote, and I, I truly believe that. I truly think that it is, and it's a very important issue, and, and that we should take you know take it seriously. Every and, dime, and imagine every having dime a movie, goes, as you say. It has to be a big movie. It's a huge top. It's it's a huge thing. It should be a big movie. Uh, her disappearance, her substitution, the third secret, the Vatican. The, oh my gosh it's just once it's done it's going to be fantastic and listen people who don't care about religion would suddenly hear about fatima and could say whoa what about that what about this miracle this son that i'm hearing about what about this message of fatima what about this russia spreading her errors what about all that that's interesting because now sort of Fatima, unfortunately, put into a little box and locked up and, oh, that's religion. Well, this will be grand crime, international intrigue, right? Portugal, totally. you know, Rome, U.S., back and forth, you know, it'll be incredible once it's done. Oh, it gets me! It gets me pumped up for it. I want to! I want to see it now. Help Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, really no, I, I think you're absolutely right. Out. And I, I've, yeah. I've got a couple of questions that people have asked. Um, someone just asked sure. where can people absolutely. donate? You, you already said. I think sisterlucytruth.org. .org. Yes. Yes. 
or you you can even uh, we have a smile account with um, with uh, Amazon that you could help uh, donate to us, but uh, or else you can send a check to us. And on the Sister Lucy uh, website, uh, it gives you the address. Uh, it's tax deductible and uh, anything would help, but because we really don't get many donations. The one we the ones we get we're so grateful for because I could pay some things. I don't get a dime from any of this. And I don't want a dime. I don't want a dime. I want everything to go into work done on the project. I'll just do That's my beautiful. little job. And, uh, I'll do my little job and, and, uh, every dime, every dime. And for one, from one, <laughs> from one person, we actually got a penny donation, but, uh, every, no, uh, I'm not lying. Chris Ferraro, but, uh, probably. Uh, every <laughs> penny, every penny goes into the work, uh, itself. And, you know, the, the, I, I can't even, you know, I just have to compensate people for like computer uh, you know, uh, fees and, um, you know, uh, various fees at the bank. But every other, we, when we produce reports, these are professionals who don't care about the Catholic religion or Fatima. So they spend time, so they have fees. So we have to pay them their fees to look at pictures or to look at all these handwriting samples because they're professionals. They just see it as, okay, well, this is a, you know, the typical job that we have, but they have to get paid. And, uh, you know, some of these uh, broadcasts that now talk about us say, well, he paid these people to, you know, produce these reports as if I paid them to give us a certain answer. Right. You know, that's how they, they imply. That's what they imply. No, they have to be paid in order to even agree to look at it because they're right. professionals. They don't, they don't do it for just, you know, pro bono. They do it I, because it's yeah, part of their job. It's yeah. one project they add and they have certain fees, certain hours they spend. They're paid by everyone this amount. So I have to pay. And I don't, I don't know the result before I get to get it. Of course not. I get the result. Wow. That's incredible. You're kidding. You know, another confirmation. You know, we were like shocked at how definitive these uh, professionals were. I mentioned yeah. one. There's so many. Look at our site. Right. They're like, the only explanation for these changes in the facial characteristics is that there's two different people. The only rational, you know, rational explanation. So. Absolutely. And, and I think that people, so, I, I have people ask fairly often, you know, how, how can we, how can we proselytize? How can we help? And, and I think that it's not always easy. We're, we're not all preachers. We're not all philosophers, no. we're not all theologians, but, no. but I, I think again, this, I like, I really like this project because it's really, it's scientific and it's something that you can touch and people who have questions about these issues, they can, right. they can see it and they can say, okay, logically. Okay. If you, if you convince me that she was replaced, as you said, then it's the next question. If she was replaced, why, why was why? she replaced? What, yeah, what why? was going why? on? Well, Fatima, what's like, up with Fatima? And I think you're, you're really right. It, it, it leads you down good roads. You know, some people can't make, the, you know, get into the whole, uh, Gerigou Lagrange and uh, versus De Lubac analysis of grace, you know, and nature. Right. But look at this. Look at this. Look at these. Look at these pictures. Look at this. The, look at these people. Look at these videos. It's visual. It's yeah. And it's not just visual. It's intuitive. Also, there's an there's an aspect of intuition where we see a different demeanor, we see a different attitude, moral attitude in the two women. I challenge anyone not to see that. I mean, there's a different aura, if you will, that just exudes from the two, the two women. One is meant for like someone who's gonna go on stage, like go on stage big time going to be standing next to the Pope and being standing next to these Cardinals and being standing next to, and going to present herself. And you know what the, uh, 
Sister Lucy did in 1967, um, May 13th. You know what she did? She held up the hand of Paul VI as if he was like just won a basketball game or something. And the crowd was cheering and she was holding up his hand and yay. We have the video. Bizarre. We have the pictures. Can you believe, I mean, how does this relate to the woman that we know and love? And we know by, I mean, just being in, seeing her videos, check out, check out the video of her 1946 uh, visit to Fatima, the real sister Lucy, where she met her family again, her mother, very beautiful. She visits the shrine. Uh, go see that and go tell me that that's the same person that appeared 20 years later to the, to the roar of the crowds. We, we, we've that, that video comes from the shrine at Fatima. That's their video that they produced. We've taken pictures from it, close-ups, and you can see that on our site. You will be able to see that on our site um, soon. So um, there's so much Great. evidence, and it's so important. The, the, it's so, ex Kevin, it's so explosive. Absolutely. Let it explode. And interesting. Yeah, right. It's fascinating, even because, you know, I don't even care if the enemies of the church use it because they'll uncover something that many people should have uncovered already, that there's a difference between the traditional Catholic church and this new church that's been constructed since the 1960s. They'll, exactly. they'll break that open and people will see, wait a minute, how are we going to get grace? How are we going to find out what the church really teaches? What is the real message of Fatima? How do we know? Has Russia been consecrated? Has Russia been converted? Like the new Sister Lucy said. And you know what she said the conversion of Russia was? Conversion... Uh, it's not conversion to the Catholic religion from communism. It's conversion to a system where anyone can believe what they want. Freedom of religion. That's that's the new. That's the conversion of Russia. And as we see now with Bergoglio, it's it's made very clear <laughs> that that's still what he believes, right? Be an apostate. I guess. You're, you're, yeah. You're still going that's to what John Paul II believed, and that's when she came yeah. out with this. Uh, this statement, but tell me how yeah. the real sister Lucy would believe that she didn't care about systems like that. I mean, she cared about communism, but uh, she was living under Franco and Salazar. Why would she care about conversion to liberal democracy? Right. That's absurd. I mean, it's really absurd. It's what, what they did with the fit with the, Sister Lucy too is just absurd. It's it's shocking. But I, you know I you got to sit with down. The, right with, with their third secret too. I I think that's shockingly odd and strange and and I think kind of ridiculous. I I, I just I mean it doesn't make any sense that that the one that they came out with the whole idea of the the man yeah. in white you know walking. I mean, okay, it sounds like a cool story and stuff, but why would they hide it? Why, why would several popes refuse to reveal it? That, yeah. There's nothing that would we, damage them. There's no reason not to. It just doesn't make sense. Right. It's, it's no, absolutely no. bogus. It's bogus. I mean, well, w again, to show our objectivity, we put this secret in front of the handwriting analyst, and they said it was authentic Sister Lucy writing. However... Clearly, well, what is it exactly? Is it the third secret? Is it part of the third secret? And the critical explanation of what this vision is was missing, like, uh, say, Antonio Sochi says, like the with the fourth secret of Fatima, right? This is part of it, but it's not the whole thing. It's it's plausible, uh, but what's not plausible is that it's just this 
pious vision, and that's the whole third secret. That's not plausible. Because over and over again, these cardinals try to leak out something about the third secret. And inevitably, they said it had to do with the apostasy in the church. And, you know, Cardinal Chappi said, and Father Gruner said this to me personally, uh, and he told me this and he believed it, uh, absolutely. That Cardinal Chappi said that the, apost the third secret is about the apostasy in the church coming from the very top. So... Makes sense. Do you see any... <laughs> it, does that shock you profoundly, Kevin, that... <laughs> that that, that I mean, would it makes sense to me. It, it makes logical sense that <laughs> if that was it, it would make sense why they would try to hide away Lucy and what or or, right. or whatever they did. It just makes logical right. sense. If you say she was right. replaced, which I think she yes. was because of the evidence, yes. then it makes sense that the secret that she held or the secrets she held sure. could would damage the Nova Soto Church. It, it just makes right. sense. I mean, I, I, to me, and, and I don't know. It's that's true. Why... But to me, it makes sense. Right, that makes perfect sense, and that's why John the Twenty Third said, "Well, this secret, after he read it, this does not apply to my pontificate. You know, mm. not me. Yeah. It's not about me. <laughs> yeah. Even though, if you say anyone, I would say at this point, if anyone sort of signed off on the disappearance of Sister Lucy, it was John the Twenty Third and Paul the Sixth. One of those. Why do you say that? Right." Oh, they well, yeah, yeah, if right. it happened sure. in nine, if it happened sure. in 1959 or late 1958, which is a possibility, or right. even up until, um, you know, early 60s, uh, they e either one of them would have had to sign off on it. Right. And there's something interesting. I don't know if you've seen it. Salvador Dali's um, rendition of the third secret of Fatima. No, excuse me. The set, the first secret of Fatima, the vision of hell. Have you ever seen it? Google it. I don't it. think so. Yeah, Google okay. it. Yeah, it's his painting, which portrays the first secret, the vision of hell. Mm -hmm. he, he was commissioned to do it, and he couldn't quite get it right. I mean, he couldn't, he wasn't quite satisfied just based on the accounts so he wanted to meet with the real Sister Lucy. You know, he doesn't know anything that's going on. Um, so he, in 1960, he wanted to meet with the real Sister Lucy. And they said, no, you can't do that. No, you can't see her. No, no, no. This was Salvador Dali, one of the most famous painters in the world. He couldn't see her behind right. the screen. He couldn't meet her behind the screen. But in 1961, wow. suddenly... Now he could meet her and talk to her. And, and then he got, you know, his description. And then he creates this really weird, uh, really weird um, painting. I mean, it's, it's him, but, you know, being with the little um, fondue forks, the devils are poking the souls. And you can see it. It's on the internet. Just Salvador Dali, Third Secret Hell. You'll, you'll see it. But, uh, so, so you know, they were having to juggle Sister Lucy and her identity and people who wanted to meet her even in the early 60s, which means, in my mind, that means um, she wasn't there. I don't think she was yeah. there. But yeah. even, even yeah, at that early stage. Right. She would have she would have tried to convey the third secret by 1960, I think, because she was given that task by our lady. That was a requirement. Um, revealed the third secret by 1960. That was a requirement. Had to be done. So she would have done it by 1960, I believe. So I think right, she was absolutely. gone by then. So that's yeah. that's my view. I get it. I mean, logically, makes sense, right? I mean, it's. You would think so. I mean, yeah, it would make sense. And But see, if you don't even know that most people have no clue that there was a substitution. Once you right. know that there's a substitution, it throws new light on the whole thing. Wow, Fatima is actually really important because if they went to these lengths, you know, they could have gotten caught. 
someone, you know, like the crowds in, in, in Fatima in 1967 could have said, no way, and could have been upset. This woman is clearly not Sister Lucy, but they didn't. You know, they kept Except for the her 10 year old managed, <laughs> and then they created pictures to act as if she was all over the place and standing next to him, Paul the Six, all the time. And but what if the crowds didn't accept it? So it was a big thing. It was a difficult thing. It was a dangerous thing for them to do, but they thought they pulled it off until various people individually uh, through the years and then the Sister Lucy Truth investigation in the last five years, four years uh, has said, let's analyze this. Let's look at the evidence. Let's put the evidence before scientific experts, medical experts. Now we have all this wonderful uh, internet technology and uh, facial analysis technology. Um, let's put it in front of them because now finally we can analyze this in a scientific way. And we've done that. It's awesome. I, I think that's a, that's a perfect place to, to finish. Um, I, I would hope, I unless you have you. anything else to say, um, I, I think that, uh, I think we've covered it really well. And I think that anyone again, who can support you in the entire mission at sister Lucy truth.org, there's a donate button. Well, I again, can't hear as you, you said, <laughs> you, you don't hear me. Okay. No, sorry, no I, I can't hear it. you. No, okay. I'm not, no. Uh, No, I can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> Am I back? Am I back? Okay. Everything is mine's on. I'm not sure. No, I think it's probably me. I think I you still don't hear me. Still no? Yeah. No, I no. can't hear you. I okay. <laughs> can't hear you. Sorry. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I hear you. Yeah. I can't. Okay. I can't hear you. I don't you know You just why. keep talking. Why is this changed? Uh... So... No, I can't hear you. Something. Anything? Still nothing. What should Just I like... do? <laughs> uh... Okay, the people are saying they hear us both. So, <laughs> I so can't. Everyone else here. Studio does not work. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's my computer, me now. but it's it stayed. It's the same as it was. Oh, that's strange. Okay, well. I'm going to say goodbye. <laughs> it's, okay. it's unfortunate that you can't hear me, but, um, <laughs> thank you. Thank I, Thank you, everyone. Was, thank you for listening to our story and our efforts. Thank you. And we will, and we will, I, I would even love to have you back on and everyone who's listening, please again, um, support him at sisterlucytruth.org and we'll do everything we can to support him as well. And hopefully we can have him on again to, to talk about this really awesome subjects so until next time we will we will talk to you later and again thanks for joining thank you